All right, so this, this library they're going to use is called uh, Psychop G2, which we can uh, take a look at. So here's the documentation. So there's version two and then version three, which is in development. We're going to use version two. We click on the documentation. Did you mean to share your screen? Am I not sharing? Thank you. You're not. So I'll go, so I just did a search for Psychop T2. And then here's the version two documentation. So this documentation is actually pretty good. So it says here that it's Psychop T2 is mostly implemented in C as a live PQ wrapper, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of Python libraries are actually written in C. There's, um, you can do that. Um, so if you look at the source code, it's not it's not the most helpful because it's not written in Python unless you happen to know C. Yeah, that's more just FYI. So if we look at the basic module usage, this first example kind of tells you everything you need to know about this library. So you're going to go through a, a series of steps. So when you before we were doing, when you um, wanted to execute SQL query, you would write some command that would create a database. And then you could either in a script or inside the command line interface, you could just execute the query immediately, right? So if you wanted to create a table, you just do that. Um, with, with this library, there's a little bit of boilerplate before and after. So the first thing you have to do is you have to create a connection object, which is right here. So we import psychop G2. There's this connection method here that, you, that you'll uh, invoke to create a connection. And then once you have a connection, you're going to create a, a cursor. So you think of a connection as basically just, you know, you're just opening a, a pipeline between you know, yourself, your program, and your database. And the cursor is what's actually going to be running everything. It's actually going to be executing commands. So you create a connection, and then you create a cursor. And then once you have the cursor, you can execute SQL statements. So you'll call this execute method. And then it's just, you just pass in a string. You're just going to pass in a normal SQL string. Okay, so you'll execute a SQL command, whatever that is. That could be uh, you, that could be a, a create statement or an insert statement or uh, a select statement. And then once you do that, this cursor object is gonna. So I, I've you know created a database here. I've inserted some data into the database, and now I want to to run a query. So once you run a query, there's another there's another uh, method or another set of methods, fetch methods, that will allow you to actually access that, that the uh, results of the query. So if we're doing this in the terminal and you execute this select star from test, <coughs> you're just going to get um, string output in, in your terminal. So you can't really do much with that, um, at least not, I mean, not, not easily. So uh, if, if, if we're integrating this database, into a Python program, we want to be able to do stuff with what we get back in Python, which is really the whole point of this. So we have all this boilerplate that we kind of have to, to go through, uh, which is more complicated than regular SQL. But the benefit we're getting is that now we can actually get these results as you know Python objects and, and use them in the rest of our Python code. So you execute the query, and then you execute this fetch statement. There's fetch one, there's fetch all. So there's a, a bunch of different fetch uh, methods. And uh, what do you get back? Tuple? Yeah. Yes, you get back a tuple. So if you use the fetch one, you get one record back. So what, 
if you use fetch one, if you use fetch all, you're actually going to get, you know, every record that matches, you'll get an array of tuples. But this fetch one will just give you a tuple. And once you have this tuple, um, <clears throat> you kind of have to know how your, uh, how your table is structured to use this. Unfortunately, that's kind of how it is. Uh, but this tuple is your actual data. And then once you have this data, you can access it. So if you want to access this second item, you can access it. And then in the rest of your Python program, you can use it. So it's kind of a, you know, rather than just having, here's the SQL bucket over here, and then here's some Python code over here. It's just a way of connecting them. So that's pretty much it. Um, there are, um, you can, well, actually, let, let's go ahead and, and take a look at this real quick. Um, all right. So the first thing I have to do is install this module, right? So I should just do pip install psychop g2. So pip is that a quick install? Is no one going to stop me? That, that's what I was asking. If that was a question, um, don't we normally set a uh, virtual environment? Yeah. To do that? Yes. Yeah. So uh, almost always a bad idea to just uh, install things globally. So we're going to create a virtual environment. So how, how do I do that? Python dash M uh, BN, BN, B, B, BNB yep. and the uh, environment name. Yeah, so you can call it whatever we want. I'll just. Uh... Okay, so, so now I can do uh, pip and solve psychop like, G2, right? No, you're not in your environment. Thank you. I'm glad someone cares about my computer. So we have to activate the virtual environment. So source. So we'll run this activate script, which got created when we created the virtual environment. So now uh, I'm actually inside of my virtual environment. So now finally I can install. G2. Okay, so that installs. Now I can import it here. All right, I'm going to copy this. So my user uh, is going to be like the name of my machine. You might have to play around with this, but. Okay. So we'll create a test database uh, for my user. And then we'll create a, so I'm gonna create a database called test. It already exists, so. All right, um, I'm just going to go ahead and run this now. So, uh, the... okay, so I executed this. Didn't looks like it didn't do anything. Um, let's do we can take a look at the cursor object. And we can see we've got all of these attributes. So we saw execute. So we know that the cursor has execute. It also has all these fetch, fetch all, fetch many, fetch one. So if we look at the documentation here, once you create the cursor, there's this execute method, which allows you to execute SQL. And then you also have these fetch uh, methods, which allow you to get the results of a query. So there's a whole bunch of other things you can look at. There's also 
Um, let's see. We have enter and exit dunders implemented. So what does that tell you? Sounds like it's similar to reading or writing to a file and then yeah. it's into an open state and needs to be closed. Exactly. So, um, so these are optional. Um, you don't have to, you know, nothing you write has to have these uh, methods, but if you do have these methods, then that fulfills the requirements. It fulfills the, the API requirements for something called uh, a context manager, which is the with statement, which is the same thing as, as we've seen with files. So with uh, open, so open, blah, 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 as blah, 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 and then you do stuff, right? So when you use this with operator, if this file object, so, so this open, this open uh, function is gonna create a file object and that file object will have implemented these enter and exit, which is why you can use it in a with statement. And this, you know, is a useful API if, if you typically do like two things. So, you know, opening a file and then closing it after you're done. So it's, it's the same kind of thing with this database connection. Are you gonna open a connection? And then it's actually a little more complicated, but um, you, you have to commit. So you'll do something and then commit it and then close the connection. So the, the with operator here, it's slightly different than the file. You don't need to worry about it, but uh, it doesn't actually close the connection uh, when the with statement finishes executing, but it, it will commit. So it, it'll either commit if there's no errors or if there are errors, it'll revert the commit. So that's how the, the with statement. So you could rewrite this. You could just create a connection and create a cursor and then do something with the cursor and then uh, cur.close and then close the connection, right? Um, but if there's an error that, that happens somewhere around here, then your program is going to stop executing and these won't get. It. So you can you have a couple ways of handling it. You can wrap this in a try catch. So it, if you, you know, anytime you do something which could uh, result in an error, you want to wrap it in a try catch block. So or try except. See. Um, yeah, I, I, this, would, this would actually be in a final. Finally, let me do that. So now I can try doing this. And if something goes wrong, like let's see. We have to use this. Is your code platoon uh spelling? Yeah, so I'm trying to throw in error here. Okay. All right. Well, uh, so so this is one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to use a, a with statement. So with, and then we'll put this in here. Chad, I have a question. Yeah. Do you close the connection? Does that also close the cursor, or do you need to close? each separately and the cursor before the connection? So I think the, the cursor, 
there's a setting um, that there's an auto commit setting, which I think by default is is on. Um, so it should commit everything um, automatically when you run it. And if there's not an error, it should it should just commit. Closing the connection. So you can see in the example that um, the cursor is closed and then the connection is closed. But if you use a with statement, then the cursor will will automatically be closed. Got it. So the cursor will be closed, but not the connection. It's a little confusing. Um, And then you do something like uh, whatever your SQL is. And then uh, this would, when this is done, if there are no errors with the cursor, then it will close the, it'll close the cursor automatically. And then you would still have to close the uh, connection with the database. So um, there's a couple ways of, of doing it. Just whatever, you know, whatever you think works best will be fine. But that's the basic idea. So it's just some boilerplate and then you can actually execute your SQL. So let's look at the, um, the readme for today. So I'm gonna create this uh, class roster database. And we'll see here, paste this in. I'm gonna change this. Oops. So, and now I can actually, I'll go into the um, database and I can take a look at it just like we would do ordinarily. PS, QL. So it exists and I have the students table. And I can see that uh, has this ID, it's an integer, which is the primary key. So it's uh, serial, which it means it'll auto increment. And then the name, which is a bar car, and then favorite food, which is bar car. All right, so I'm gonna quit here. So the same, the same process where we create a connection and then we create a cursor and then we can execute a query on, on this cursor object. And we're not doing anything with it right now. We just close uh, close the connection. So, so we're explicitly committing this here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna redo this real quick. So And if I go into the database, I have this students table. And everything worked. Um, so this commit statement, this is in here kind of just to show you, uh, to show you, to, to make more explicit what's happening. So by default, the, the auto commit is on, but when we get to uh, Django, you'll see that there are times where, where, where you want to play this. So, so or play around with this. So you'll, you'll let's say write a query or something, um, but then you'll wanna modify it before you actually commit it. So committed is like, I'm actually changing the database now. 
So it creates this kind of uh, in-between phase where you're creating a transaction, but it's not actually, it's not permanent until you, until you commit it. You don't need to worry about that right now, but just to, for future reference. So, so when you say there's a setting, you mean in, in the, in the psycho PG um, package, there's a setting. So you would have to like type in yeah. something in the command line to change that setting. Uh, yeah, I don't think you would, it would be on the command line. I think when you created a connection, you'd probably pass some kind of config here. Let me see. Um, okay. It, 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 I was just curious how that would work. Let's see. Commit. Yeah, I have to. I have to look around and play with it. But it looks like here, for example. No, that makes sense to me now. It's 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 just a parameter when you're opening a connection session. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. So there's you know some some optional config you could. Um, All right. Um, so here, same thing except we're gonna. Um, we're going to insert some data. Change this. Add that drop database. So now I've uh, executed this. So create a connection, create this cursor. I've executed a whole bunch of stuff, creating uh, creating a table, inserting stuff, and then committing, which is optional, um, and then closing everything. So I can go see the database again. So uh, Okay, and now I can do select star just to see if it's in there. Okay, so I have all this stuff. All right, so um, I'd like to do this quickly if possible. Um, I just want to show you know how this actually uh, integrates into what we'll be doing. So I want to write a a quick program that is going to basically ask the user. Um, so it, it'll be like, I can search for John and get information about John or search for Tom and get information about Tom. So we want to have some kind of uh, command line interface that will ask a user for a name. And then uh, when it gets the name, it'll execute the query in the database, retrieve the information from the database and then uh, display that to the user. So we're gonna have uh, two classes. We're gonna have a, uh, a terminal. This will be the interface, the uh, user interface class. So we'll have self and um, that's probably good for now. And so the terminal is going to uh, ask the user for uh, input. We'll, we'll we'll do this. Try this quickly. Um, but it's going to need to. It's going to need a database connection. So we're going to have to supply it a database connection. So we're gonna to have to create, I'll put this on 
hold right now and let's create a database class. Okay, and this database class, I want to open this over here. So you know that uh, anytime we create a database, we're gonna have to go through basically three, you know, we're gonna end up doing three things. We're gonna have to uh, create a connection that we can execute. In this case, um, we already have our database created, so we're not gonna create it, but, but we need to execute a query. So we're gonna initialize the connection create the connection in the cursor. Then we're gonna execute uh, the query and then uh, you know, and return the results and then close the connection. So we're gonna have to do those things. We can put those into uh, separate methods. So import. I'm not sure we're gonna do any init yet. So def. Uh, And then we're gonna create this connection. Um, maybe you could make this a self. So okay, and then the cursor we'll do the same thing. Okay, and I can go ahead and uh, fill these in just for the sake of reference. So self dot connection none for now. And, uh, okay, so I can initialize a connection. Now uh, we want to execute a query. And let's say we just want to look for name, so we'll get someone's name. And we're going to need a uh, like a query template, basically. Um, so if we look here, you can see. So here we're just selecting star from test, but if we actually want um, to do something more complicated or more custom, we'll have to uh, dynamically create this query, basically. So if you look at the documentation here, it tells you how to how to do that. So you could just use like string regular string interpolation, uh, and that would work, but it's not as secure. So we're not going to talk about SQL injection attacks right now, but um, that's something that, that you'll have to think about a little bit later. Uh, so the way this works is you'll use this percent %s as a placeholder. So this execute statement, optionally, it could take just one parameter, which would be the whole query to execute, which we see right here. Execute just takes one parameter. Uh, it also can take two parameters. If you give it two parameters, it will be the the query string that you want with this like dummy value there. And then a tuple of everything that's going to fill in the blanks here. So we'll we'll do that. I'm going to create this as a, an instance variable. Um, To be select star from so select everything from students where name is whatever we pass in. So we have that query template. So now that we have that. Uh, we can use our cursor object, so self.cursor.execute. 
and we'll pass in the self.query template. And then a tuple with the specific name that we're gonna look for. And there's a quirk with tuples. Um, if you just have one, if you just have one thing in the tuple, uh, you have to have a trailing comma. A little bit of a gotcha. Okay, so we're gonna execute the query uh, and then we're going to return. We're gonna return that. So, uh, so we've executed the query and now we're going to have to actually get the, uh, get the result. And we do that with fetch. So we execute the query and then the cursor has this fetch method that we'll use to access. And since uh, it should just be one, we'll, we'll just assume it's one, we'll use fetch one. But if there are multiple records, use fetch all or whatever. So self that fetch one. Turn that. Okay, so we've created a we can create a connection. Uh, we can execute a query, and we're going to need to close the connection. So def. Um, so that'll be self dot cursor dot close. Action. All right, um, so we got these methods. I'm gonna put everything in a, a main method. And that's gonna also take a name. Now, because uh, all of these things could potentially produce errors, I'm gonna uh, wrap them in a try block. Uh, or try catch block. So try, and that will be self dot in initialize the connection, and then self dot execute query. And that will take the name. I will return this, and then. Yeah. And we'll close the connection in the final block. Okay. So yeah, so now we have this uh, class which should be able to, if I call the main method, it'll create this connection uh, and it will execute the query, which should return a result, which I will then return from here. And if uh, there's a problem, I'm just gonna log it um, and then we'll close the connection no matter what happens. All right, so now that we have this, uh, database class, we can go back to terminal and now we can uh, initialize this. So we'll have to import it. So um, from db import db. I think we have to initialize it. Yeah, that should be fine. So now we have a, a database object. So I'm just going to write something simple here. Um, uh, I want to get someone's name. I'm not going to do any kind of checking. And then, uh, so once we have the name we want to search for, we're going to have to, we'll, we'll, we'll call the main method. So, um, so dot db dot name and we'll call it with name so main method 
takes the name and that should return, let's see. We'll do a formatted string here. So F. Um, actually, we'll, we'll we'll just do the answer first. And we'll see what we get. All right. Um, so I'm just going to do this here. So I'll create a terminal uh, instance of the terminal. So T equals. Dot ask question. And we'll see if this works. Okay, so it's going to ask me who I want to know about. And I know that John exists here. So I want to know about John. Okay, so there's a problem. Okay, so the error catching uh, is working here. So the execute query name. Here's a problem. Let's do message. Yeah, we'll just try printing this. Okay, so I'm uh, getting the actual error here it says DB object has no attribute fetch one. So what did I do wrong here? If anyone can see it. Does uh, fetch one uh, that method have to be called on on cursor. Yeah, exactly. So I made a mistake and I I said, hey self, i.e. this database class that I'm creating, uh, call fetch one, but this doesn't have one, obviously. So it's the cursor self dot cursor dot fetch one. Let's try this again. Okay, so now I, uh, I've got this information and it's a, a tuple. So now I can, I know what it, what it looks like. So let's make this look a little nicer. So F. Um, name. Nothing spectacular, but just to show that we can use this in our code uh, as as usual. So Mike, so Mike likes to eat Thai curry. But now we have a Python program that can interact with our database, and we can use you know we can write queries uh, in in Python code, and we can execute them, and we could you know write insert statements. We could do Anything that we need to do with the database, but now we can do it in Python and we can get the results of queries also uh, as Python objects and then use them in the rest of the program. Hey Chad, can you um, arrange that where I can see the whole, the whole, all of the code so I can take a screenshot? Sure. Yeah. Um, let's see. So here's terminal. I can also uh, paste this in the in Slack after. But yeah, here's the terminal and then the database. Let's see if I can, yeah. Okay, thanks. All right, are there any questions about that? All right, 
So let's keep uh, rolling. So we're going to look at another example. So we've, we we should be you know basically familiar with how this works now. Um, now we're going to look at uh, using CSVs in databases. So we've already looked at CSVs, but now we're going to basically what we're going to do is we're going to read from a CSV and then clean up the data a little bit and then um, uh, insert it into the database so we can use it inside the database. So for this example, we're going to create a database called Sacramento Real Estate. All right. All right, so we have our Sacramento Real Estate and now CSV example.py. So we'll create this. And I'm not going to use this library. Okay, so this is expecting a file. Um, which I don't have locally on my machine. Um, so I'm gonna go, this is in the, in the weeks repo. So if you go to the week, uh, there's this lecture materials folder and then the Sacramento transactions CSV, you go there. And then um, I'm gonna click on raw here so I can just copy it and paste it. <laughs> into a local file here. So I'll call this data.csv. I'll paste that in. So now I have the CSV. So I'm gonna change this path to data. And let's run this and see what happens. So I can, uh, See all these, so I'm gonna print. So if, if we look at all the, the methods and attributes on the CSV reader object, uh, what do we, what 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 kind of thing is it? A list. Uh okay. Um so you can easily convert it into a list. It's not exactly a list though. Yeah, it's a it's a generator. And you know it's a generator because it implements iter and next. So uh, because it's a generator, we can we can basically treat it like a list, uh, except it doesn't exist all at once. So if you if you were to convert a generator to a list, a generator is basically like um, a bunch of potential values, and you don't actually activate them or realize them until you execute it. Um, but if you create a list, then the whole list, so if you have a huge file, like a huge CSV file with a billion lines in it, then if you created a list, it would create those billion, it would create a billion entry list all at once, which might, you know, blow up your program. Uh, but if you use a generator, then it'll just access one at a time. So you don't have to worry about running out of memory or anything like that. Um, so that's, that's why uh, this is implemented as a, a generator. And generator, just like a list, you can loop over. Um, so you can loop over it. One difference though, what if I try to do this twice? Do I get, let's see, let me do, um, let's 
So what happened? So it looks like I printed all the rows here. Did I print them twice? Doesn't look like it. Uh, yeah, I can't. Yeah, so if this had executed, then you would have seen second time through a whole bunch of times. Uh, but it didn't because because it's a generator. It's basically like a single use. It's a it's a single use thing. So once you run through the generator, it's done and you can't reuse it. So like a list, you can iterate over it and then iterate it over again and so on. But generator uh, doesn't work that way. So, once so, so under the hood, the, the exit dunder is being called and that's why nothing happens after line seven. Um, well, okay, so that's a good point. So this, this uh, CSV file object is a, a context manager. So that's different than the CSV reader. So this, the, the CSV file object, which we can take a look at. So the CSV file object has the enter and exit dunder. It also has next and um, what does it have? Iter. Yes, it has iter and next. So it's also a generator. So you could also loop over this file. So we could do for x in CSV file. So not to be confusing, but this is both a context manager and a, a, a generator. Um, but in this case, we're not we're not using the CSV magic here. So it's just the line that it's reading from the file. So this is just like a string. <coughs> but but yes, in this case, you can iterate over it. Um, but that's not really what we're using this for. Uh, we're, we're using this for its open and close or enter and exit. So when you when, when this gets created, uh, open gets called. In this case, enter gets called, which does whatever it does, which in this case is going to be opening the file. And then if there's an exception, if there's an exception, it will handle the exception and exit and make sure that the file gets closed no matter what. So that's that's the benefit. It just you could do all that yourself. You could explicitly, you know, put it in a try uh, a try block and then say open the file and then do whatever you want. And if there's an exception, then you catch it uh, and then finally close close the file. So you, you could do all that yourself, but this just, you know, because that's repetitive and it, you know, happens every time, it, every time you open a file, basically, uh, it's just a way of, it's basically convenience. Okay. Um, yeah, that was a little bit of a detour, but I just wanted to remind you guys about, you can check things out in Python. Okay. All right, so we've got this, um, and then we saw that it just creates, it's a dict reader, so it's gonna um, create a bunch of dictionaries for every row. Um, so here, I'm gonna copy this, and because everything in a CSV is a string, and it might not be formatted in a way that's useful for you, um, almost always you'll do some kind of, uh, some kind of processing or, uh, data cleaning. So we're gonna, let's see. We're just defining these methods. So here's the, the table creation query. Um, here's this clean data, which is gonna basically read, you know, each one of these rows and it's gonna uh, 
rename them in some cases. In some cases, it's going to convert them to, uh, so everything is a string in the CSV, and this is going to get converted to an integer. This is going to get converted to uh, a daytime object. Uh, this is going to get converted to a, a decimal object, which is basically like a more precise float. Um, and you can look at the documentation to see um, what Python types are equivalent to what SQL types. Okay, here we're just creating the connection as usual. I'm going to change this. Um, we'll create this connection and then the cursor object, and then we're going to execute the table creation query, which is going to create the table. And then we're going to use uh, the width statement, the context operator or the context manager to open this file, which is now just called data. And we're gonna process it like we've done for CSVs. And then for every row, which is gonna be a, a dictionary, we're gonna send it through our uh, cleaner function. So this clean data is gonna get the CSV row is gonna be a row, of the CSV file, which is a dictionary. And we're basically just gonna recreate the dictionary, but processed, right? So we have this empty dictionary and we're gonna take everything that exists here and run it through some processing and we'll return a cleaned row. And then once we have uh, a cleaned row, we'll, we're gonna execute an insert statement. So this is you know, difficult to read, but we have this uh, formatted uh, syntax. So we're gonna insert into, here's all the column names, and then the values, it's gonna be all these placeholders. And then the second argument is, again, this is very hard to read, but the second argument to the execute function is a tuple of all of the, um, the values that are gonna fill in these blanks here. So we'll execute that and then we'll uh, commit and close. So if we run this file, we're gonna create the database. We're gonna read from the CSV file. We're gonna process and clean the CSV file data. And then we're gonna insert it into our database. So let's go ahead and run CSV example. And we can take a look uh, inside of our database. So PSQ. Is the database name here? Sacramento Real Estate. And all of that stuff uh, is in there. All right. So if we wanted to run a query, Uh, steal, let's see. Steal some of this boilerplate here. Okay, so create a connection, create a cursor, and then if I want to execute uh, a query, we'll just do one of these. So, are single family homes or condos more expensive on average? So we want to have single family homes or condos. So if we look at this, it's difficult to, to read, it's all smush, but we have property type. We have residential and condo. Um, so let's see which property type is more expensive. First off, let's go ahead and see what property types we have. We're gonna do... Um, So how, how can we do that? If I, I just want to see all the different property types that we have. Like a dis distinct property type. Okay. Select. So 
Okay, so I can execute this. Uh, and then if that's successful, I should be able to cursor that. I have a bunch of fetch, um, fetch things. So I'll do fetch all. This will give me a, a list and I'll print that. I think you need to import SciCop. Thank you. And I get, so uh, what, what kind of thing do I get back from this fetch all? A list of tuples. Yep, I get a list of tuples. So I can uh, iterate over this maybe, let's see, so for, Um, and so if I happen to know that there's just one, so I'm just going to print R0. Condo and residential. So I know uh, that, that I only have these two. So if I want to find out uh, our single, so on average, which of these two is more expensive? So we want to run a query on the average um, price where the property type is residential and one on where it's condo and compare the two. Okay, so we could, uh, yeah, we could definitely do that. So let's do, um, yeah. So cursor to execute. So we'll do, uh, can you say that again? So select. Uh, select average uh, sale price. Okay, sale price, yeah. From properties where property type equals residential. And I think what I would do is I would save, save that um, query as a variable, and then I would run the same query on, on the condo and then I would just compare the two. Should just be fetch one. So I think I'm going to have to add Okay, so I think this works. So now we could say um, print Okay, um, actually, let me just do this. So condos are more expensive, apparently. So this works. Um, 
And this is one of the nice things about uh, doing this in Python where you can, you can do stuff like this. You can write lots of different queries and get results and then use Python to, to process them. Um, is there a way to write this as a single query? Could we like loop through? Uh, oh wait, what was I saying? Oh yeah, loop through that one tuple that we had before, um, and kind of uh, like string interpolation into the select. But you said not to do string interpolation. I forgot what else it was. But yeah, yeah. So there's a couple. Um, so, so so this does work, right? But the issue is we're making two queries to a database. So if you imagine in a realistic application, your, uh, your database is gonna be on another server somewhere. So if I wanna make a query to the database, that takes time, I have to make a query, and then I get the result back. And then I make another query, and then I get the result back, and then I do something. And if you have a more complicated thing, you could be making lots and lots of uh, queries, which, can be time consuming and waste resources. So it's it's best if possible to have one query that's gonna return the result that you need. So getting the, where are we here? Uh, on average. So which is more expensive on average? I'll take a shot at it. Okay. Select property type. Let's look at the schema. So it's easier. Okay. Select property type. Round. Average sale price from properties grouped by property type. Okay, we're going to select property type and then round. We'll get the average sale price. We'll group by property type. Okay. Let's take a look at this. And then we'll do uh, fetch all. Okay, so I think this is this is better, right? Now we have one query, and we're getting everything we need. So so now we can say, um, you know, we could do whatever Python we want to do here. But but we got all the information we need in one query instead of two. So either one will work. Um, but if you're thinking about an application, you know, like a real world, a real world application, then you're going to want to minimize that uh, traffic to and from the database. All right. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah. So the challenge for today is going to be Chicago salaries. So the city of Chicago has a bunch of um, open source data. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab a CSV file from the data portal. And if you have issues getting this, let me know. Um, but you'll grab the, this data, uh, download it as a CSV, and then you're gonna have to create a database based on that CSV and then write some queries. So you'll have to uh, process the data 
and then uh, write queries. All right, um, any questions about that?